Friends, I have a really nice video for you today, as well as a new knife pattern for my channel. So as you know, I'm somewhat pig-headed when it comes to my case knife searches. But I recently got a lead on a store that is rumored to have one of the best case knife displays in Central Florida. And it's located in Plant City, Florida, an area where most residents are hard-working, simple folk who know the value of a quality knife. The store is G5 Feed and Outdoor in Plant City, Florida, and it's right off of US 92. And here I am pulling right now. Look at all the side-by-sides and golf carts they have right out front. Parking lot's a little empty. This is a Thursday afternoon, but I don't know. It's a big store, so it looks promising. And I got a parking spot right up front. I like the way they have them angled for big trucks, too. Live bait. That's a good sign. All right, so let's go on in here and see what they have for some cool knives. But before we do, please take a moment to subscribe to the channel, like this video, and share it to any of your friends who might like similar knife content like this. It's what keeps the channel going. Thank you. Alright, so once we get inside, they have a ton of golf carts, side-by-sides, four-wheelers, big old fishing section over here, even a, looks like a blue marlin on the back wall here. More fishing stuff. More side-by-sides. Pretty cool, huh? What a nice door. Check out these rocking chairs. Let's see how much these are. American made. Hmm. I don't know. Not today. Alright. Should be some knives over here, back in the hunting section. That's usually where most people keep them. Oh, check this out. Man, I busted my lip on these so many times as a kid. I'd get going to town and I would just hit my chin right on the back of that horse. Man, put my front teeth right through my bottom lip. I don't know how many times. Check out this big old boy. That thing is huge. Look at them claws. Man, he could just bite your head right off, couldn't he? Hello, Yogi. Look at them paws on this boy. Alright, where are we at? Uh, some more like the feed side over there. Oh man, this must be it. Yes it is. Man, look at all those different scales on these peanuts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We got seven peanuts just right here in the corner. Look at them. And the glass is perfectly clear. Got pictures and bandanas. Man, what a nice display. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, look at that. There's that folding hunter. Oh, look at these trappers over here. That blue one's pretty nice, huh? Yeah, we see this folding trapper almost every display right now. Wish it was a single blade. It had a full flat grind. I'd get it. There's a Shriner knife. Here's some more of the display. Man, they got all kinds of pictures hanging everywhere. Look at this one here. Old station wagon with a knife on top. Here's some case fixed blades. Alright, honestly, I don't really know the names of this. I'm sure that's Stacked Leather Hunter or something like that. But, there's a case hats. Horseshoe in there. Look at this. You don't see too much of this either. There's a sharpening stone, a small one. And, um, some slips for your knives, for your belt. There's some snap sheaths. Look, there's a spare blade kit for a trapper. I don't know what this leather down here is. Must be like just a place to keep them. Some photographs in there. And here's a, a case kind of a uh, sharp maker. And some oil down here. Got some bench maze down here on the bottom. Fixed blades. I don't know a whole lot of the names for these uh, bench made fixed blades either. 
you know I know they have the meat eater that's expensive knife usually around 400 something bucks and here's some out the front automatics I don't get into these too much but I they're cool I just don't spend my money on them I have other knives this green one if I was to get one that's the one I'd get and here's a bunch of bench made folders most of them have thumb studs. That's why you don't see a lot of bench maids on my channel. I like the um, the hole. Like, see the the one with the orange blade there. That's a tagged out. It has a hole in the blade. That's the way I like to open them. I think the thumb stud takes up a portion of the blade and um, makes it harder to sharpen, hard, harder to to get deep into a fillet or something. But I go into that more in other videos. Let's see what we got. Spiderco. Now I talked to the guy. They only got one knife in here right now, but they just became a dealer, and they ordered forty-five hundred dollars worth of Spiderco knives. So that thing should be full here in another week. I'll come back and check that out. This one here's got a little bit of variety. It's got sog. It's got buck. It's got some brownings in here. Yeah, I got a few other fixed blades right here buck and then the, the 112 there and uh, there's a Skinner that's a nice little knife I've been meaning to pick one of them up and some more down here slim pro select stacked hunter that's a nice looking knife huh not sure who made that one there's an alligator head back here in the corner multi-tool Sog, buck hat back there in the corner. What a nice display, huh? There's a browning. I, I checked this knife out here, and I thought it looked pretty cool, but I passed on it. It's only twenty nine bucks. All right, so here's some modern case knives, and they kind of have the same problem. They have a thumb stud or a flipper, and I just really like the thumb hole. So I wish more knife manufacturers would do like Spider Co. and offer the thumb hole, and and they are. I see more of them. Look at these sod busters down here; they're beautiful. And, uh, that red one there I liked, the purple. Here's some of the the newer case knives. Which look at all the stuff they have these knife blanks, and here, man, look at that. Those are pretty. Look at that large copper lock right there, but I just can't spend that kind of money on one blade. All kinds of paraphernalia here. Look some knife blanks. There's where they stamped out the knife blades. That case guy really did a good job helping them put a nice display. Look at all this stuff. Where do you get this stuff at? You know? It's not like this store has been there for a hundred years. I mean, this is all stuff they put together fairly recently. It all looks brand new. Look at the photos in the back. That must be the old case factory back there. Oh, we got up here. Oh, look at that green sod buster. I really almost bit the bullet on that. But I selected a different knife. And you'll have to check out the end of the video to see what knife I got. But I did get a knife here. A bunch of toothpicks there. I didn't really show you. Here's some small stockman's congress pretty cool a lot more photographs i don't know who all these people are but i'm sure they mean something to somebody look at this one here with the sheep's foot that's a good looking blade american flag on it here's a bunch of canoes bunch of canoes and uh, I was really interested in these. I looked at every one of them. And uh, yeah, nice selection of canoes. You don't usually see that many canoes in one place. And down below there, look down there, you got a bunch more of those um, where they stamp the knives out of them. And some pretty knives. That yellow one's nice down there. But I picked out my knife and it was time to me to head out. I've been here quite a long time. Checked out the moose, checked out the turkeys. You know, 
Look at these big old boys, huh? Takes a lot to put this kind of stuff. It takes up square footage, doesn't make you money, it's just a display, but and it costs a lot of money to set stuff like that. Good job, G5, on this store. Great store, I will be back. Alright, so what did I get? Well, obviously it's not in an Ace Hardware bag. It's just in a regular old paper bag here. And it's obviously a case knife. And if you know anything about case knives, so this white box means a it's a carbon steel blade. Now this had two stickers. Now this one here is amber bone peach seed jigged canoe 62131 carbon steel and it was made in 2023. All right. So that's amber bone peach seed jig, but this sticker here says embellished smooth green synthetic. And I realized later that I paid 58 and I looked online for this knife and it's in, up in the $80 in most places. So somebody stuck an extra sticker on this box and saved me 20 some bucks. So that's all right. I'm blowing up their store on my video, so they're getting free ads. Plus, I'll be back to buy more knives, so it'll work out. All right, so let's check out our little paper here. All right, small Congress, and eh, nothing exciting there. Put that back in there to save that. Even the paper on this knife was in really good shape. Most of the ones I get nowadays, this papers half disintegrated or all wrinkled really bad uh, well there's a canoe amber bone peach seed jig let's get up close and personal and check it out so it's got this I call it a spear point blade alright and let's check out the the tang on it here. Well, first let's look at the blade. This got a canoe on there, being kind of hard with the lights in here and the reflection on the mirror polish. But you can see part of it sometimes here. But it's a little canoe with an Indian in it. I usually don't do blades with uh, embellishments on them, but I thought this one was pretty cool. It's just simple canoe, nobody's name nothing real fancy just a simple design and it fit the knife it's a canoe knife so I liked it another thing is I usually don't go with amber bone I usually go with more colorful but I thought this was a good looking knife here's the tang stamp I was trying to show you now check it out there's like a shadow on it see that I think that's where they put a piece of tape or something when they did the embellishment to protect the tang stamp and um, I don't know sometimes I wonder if they put a clear coat on these blades if you want to know the truth but um, you definitely see that shadow on there let's look at the other one yeah it's got the same kind of shadow check it out see it looks like there's almost like a piece of a tape on there it doesn't really match the shape of the knife or maybe it does a little I don't know anyway it says USA 62131 CS for carbon steel but other than those shadows it's a good looking knife and the quality looks very nice on this there's no gaps in the back spacer everything's nice and flush Transitions are good here from the bone to the bolsters on this side. Can't feel the outer pins. The inner one, well, you usually always can feel that one. Let's check this side here. Yeah, perfectly smooth transition. And the shield is nice and inlaid in there. So it doesn't protrude either. Nice job, Case. It's got the the brass liners in here and the bone is equally spaced on both sides one side's not proud let's go ahead and lube this up with some of my one angry kid knife oil and protect it 
Let's see if it makes it bling any. So, but definitely protect these carbon steel blades. These carbon steel blades will rust up if you don't put something on there and keep them protected. And my knife oil is non-toxic and you can get it at oneangrykid.com. I have them there in two packs and I have a lot of other products and this week I'm going to be adding quite a few more so check out oneangrykid.com if you want to buy some oil if you want to buy some knives you want to buy some leather straps or you want some hats mugs shirts anything like that all right because that's how we pay the bills around here all right so back to this knife we're just going to coat everything real good that way we have no worries about rust my oil is, like I said, it's non-toxic, it's safe to use to carve up an apple, orange, banana, whatever you want. There's nothing toxic about it. Everything is food safe, NSF approved and certified. And it does a very good job of staying where you put it and protecting the knife without being overly greasy or oily. And it does a great job lubricating these joints too. But this knife's still a little stiff. It's going to need a little bit of working to free it up. Let's put a little bit more oil in the ends here. Let that soak in. That large blade is still a little bit stiff. Let's make sure we get some in here. All right. And we just wipe off the excess, get the cap back on our oil, and let's check it out. All right. Of course, you got to get your fingers cleaned off, right? That's right, a little better. You're still going to have to work that back and forth half a dozen times, 20 times or so, get it freed up. Get that oil all up in there. Get all that excess off of there. And it's getting better. Just a little tight from the factory, that's all. Alright. Okay, well. I don't know if it's any darker or not. But I think the bone here, it's got a lot nicer look to it. A lot more gloss looked a little flat before and oil tends to show a few less fingerprints I don't know I like this little knife I think it's pretty cool you know it does have two spear point blades so that's a downside would have been cool to have maybe two different shape blades but Let's compare it to the Sodbuster Junior. This is also a carbon steel blade. As you can see, it's a little bit shorter overall. Yeah. Maybe three eighths of an inch shorter overall than the Sodbuster Junior. Um, the handle's a little shorter too. And it's actually a little bit narrower. The um the canoe is a little bit narrower than the Sodbuster. Let's go ahead and get out the ruler and get the specs on this little canoe so y'all know exactly what we got. So we got an overall blade length of two and three quarter, a sharpened edge length of I don't know, two and three sixteenths, two and a quarter, something like that. Length of the handle coming in at three and a half. This is a nice size blade. And the overall, in the thickest part here of the scales, it's only a half inch. Look at that. So, it's still a handy small size pocket knife. Two blades. You know, Sodbuster's only got one. This one's got two. Because it's got this little small spear point down here. Let's check it out. So, we got a inch and seven oh no yeah inch and seven eighths inch blade 
little bit. Inch and three quarter inch cutting edge. So, but this one doesn't have a sharpening choil. See, I don't have it right there. Just straight. That's a little strange. I'm used to seeing Case usually puts a nice little, little sharpening choil in there, like this blade. See it? That makes it kind of nice. You can see that canoe maybe a little better. But, uh, yeah, you can see the canoe better here. Alright, so how sharp is it out of the box? Case have been kind of yin and yang on that here lately. Uh oh, and this one looks like a yang. You know what? I felt the edge on this. I thought it was really going to do good. It felt good. You know, when you drag your finger across the blade, it felt sharp. Especially this little one here. I was being extra careful when I was handling the blade. That sucker don't even cut. But it feels sharp. Huh. Well. Alright. Well, once again... I'm still using this old leather strop because I can't find my new one after I moved. But the good news is, is I am now a dealer for Beavercraft. And my first order of supplies should be in in the next couple of days. And once they get here, I'll start posting them on my store, oneangrykid.com. And I'm going to have about half a dozen different kinds of leather straps on there all right and they are one of the highest quality straps that I could find all right and they're gonna be reasonably priced and I'm gonna be able to sell those about the same price as Amazon does so Take a look in a few days, oneangrykid.com, and you'll start seeing that. I'm going to have some bushcraft knives. I already got t-shirts, mugs. I already have some of my channel knives on there. And I'm going to start, after I do reviews, I'm going to start putting some of my um, knives I did reviews on up there. So you'll save a few bucks because it's now a used knife because I did a video on it. And sometimes I'll throw in some knife oil with it or something like that to make it a good deal. Make it a better deal than going to the store and buying it. Alright, so that's how I'm going to start turning knives. And that'll allow me to bring more knives to the channel. And keep me from having a stockpile of knives laying around that I don't need. Because some of the knives I review just for you. Alright, how'd it do? Well, yeah. it's a little better, but... It feels like it's got a burr or something there, but I'm just not seeing one. But it does definitely have a hard time starting to cut. It just doesn't feel right. Yeah. Is my angle wrong? No, it's just not going through that paper good. Alright, so we're going to have to do something about that. Let's check out the other one. I dropped it. Did it sharpen up? No. No. Just as bad. Alright, so no simple fix on this knife. We are going to have to do it the right way. So I'm going to grab my little Spider Coast ceramic double-sided stone here. And the best thing I've found is this Dawn Power Wash. I used to use to use a squirt bottle of a little Dawn, but this Power Wash is much better. I mean, it works great for everything. And let me tell you, on these ceramic stones, it is the bomb. So that is the tip of the week. Dawn Power Wash on your ceramic stones. And let me tell you, this makes the knife just 
feel like it wants to carve right into that stone. And that's what my granddad always told me. When you're doing it right, that blade will feel like it wants to carve right into it. So if you don't have the right angle, it's not going to feel like that. And if you have the wrong stone for the knife, meaning the blade is too hard for the stone that you're using to sharpen it, the blade will just skip over it like a file will skip over hardened steel. Alright, it has to feel like it wants to carve into it or you're not doing any good at all. Alright, so... All right, let's get this tip cleaned up here a little bit. And uh, I think the tip was a little worse. I could feel it as I was doing the whole blade. I could feel it having a little bit of a hang up here on the tip. So I'm just working this tip a little bit more than the rest of the blade. But I have confidence in the way it's feeling that it's going to do okay. So let's take this. And, man, it feels sharp. Let's check it out. Oh, yeah. That is sharp. Look at that. It's shaving it nice and clean. All right, shade me. Nice bold spot right there. All right, so let's just give it a few passes on the leather. And some people say that the green compound, you know, is coarser than the ceramic fine by Spyderco. But I feel that the compound breaks down over time, and it's actually finer. Because I don't put compound on that side. That's just whatever compound was left over that transferred to that side of the strop. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what we were looking for. Yep. Yeah. Alright, so. That's what nice, what nice about these little blades. You can use that little stone and take care of them. Alright, so as we start wrapping this up, it's not a knife review unless you compare it to the pair of two. Pair of two is my beginning, and we'll try to always include it in every knife review, so there's a difference between that and that. Of course, it's got two blades on the canoe, one on the para. But the para beats it in a lot of other ways. Alright, so pretty cool, huh? Alrighty, so... Stay tuned. I have more case products I bought. I have this stone I'm going to try out. I got another knife in this box here, another carbon steel. But that's going to be another video. I want to thank you for viewing the video. I want to hope that you subscribe to the channel and share it to your friends. And please check out oneangrykid.com for some knife supplies. Once again, thanks for viewing.